In this chapter, we're going to look at acids and bases, and there are three definitions of acids and bases. So we'll look at the first two first, and we won't discuss um, Lewis acids and bases until the very end of the chapter. So the first definition um, it comes from Arrhenius, and uh, you may remember that name from uh, Kinetics, um, same guy. And he said an acid is a substance that when you put it in water, when it dissolves in water, it's going to increase the H plus concentration of ions. And a base is something that when you put it in water and it dissolves in water, it's going to increase the OH minus concentration. So acids increase H plus and bases are going to increase the OH minus. And that, that definition was kind of like the starting point. It doesn't really include all of the acids and bases that we're going to look at in this chapter. And so Bronsted and Lowry um, kind of expanded on that definition a little bit. And here's what they said. So they said acids um, involve a, a proton, acid-based reactions involve a proton transfer. So acids are things that donate a proton, so they must have a removable H plus. And bases are things that accept protons, um, and they're going to have some non-bonding electrons. So we call H pluses protons. So this is a proton, um, this H plus. So the reason why we call an H plus a proton is because if you think about what a hydrogen atom is, a hydrogen atom has uh, one proton and one electron, and that's it. And so if you got rid of the electron, now you have an H plus ion, and all it really is is a proton. So we call H plus just an, an acidic proton. Um, and so here is an example of a proton transfer reaction where you have an acid. This guy's an acid. You can see it has that hydrogen out in front. That's a good indicator that you have an acid, um, or you have an H right here. And so what happens in this proton transfer reaction is this hydrogen is going to be transferred to the water, and you make something called hydronium over here. It's H H3O plus, and you have Cl minus left over. That's your conjugate base. So in an acid-base reaction, you're going to have an acid and a base on both sides. So here's your acid. Your Yep, HCl is an acid, this is a base, and then the uh, conjugate acid over here looks like that, and the conjugate base on this side is, is that guy. So we're going to talk a little bit about conjugate acid, acids and bases in the next section here. Um, I, I do want to point out something, another word, amphiprotic. Amphiprotic just means it's something that can gain or lose a proton. So just by looking at it, just by looking at something like water, water can, it has these hydrogens that can come off, it can come off and you can make OH minus, or it has these lone pairs so it can accept another, another proton and become the hydronium ion. So water can act as an acid or a base, so we say that water is amphiprotic. So here are some other things that are amphiprotic. So we have water, water. Um, HCO3 minus, so that minus means it can take on a proton, the H out in front means it can donate a proton, so that's why it can act as either an acid or a base, and so whenever you see that, you can think this thing is amphiprotic, and there's another one. Okay, so let's look at conjugate atoms of hydrogen. So let's look at some conjugate acid-base pairs. Um, so I'm just going to write another proton transfer reaction here, so if we had H, oops, there we go, HNO2, plus, plus water, what's going to happen here? This is the acid, water's going to act as the base. So I know that the HNO2 is the acid because it has the hydrogen out in front, it's not amphiprotic, it doesn't have a negative sign, so I know that this is what's going to happen, so water's going to act as the base. You'll have some NO2 minus ions left over and some hydronium. And if you want, this is an equilibrium reaction, so you can write the Ka expression. The A just means it's an acid ionization reaction, so we have an acid in water. And remember I had to write these from uh, the last chapter, H3O plus, all over HNO2. So why did I leave the water out? Because the water is a liquid and we never put liquids or solids in our equilibrium constant expressions. Um, let's look at another one. If we did something like acetic acid. This is acetic acid in water. And acetic acid is a special kind of acid. It's a carboxylic acid. So wherever you see the COOH group here, that means it's a carboxylic acid. It's always going to be a weak acid. This is actually the hydrogen that comes off. Um, so this is one time where we usually don't put the hydrogen out in front. It's in the at the very end in the carboxyl group, 
and that carboxyl group, just so you know, looks like this, that C double bond O and then an H. So it's not actually C, O, O, H. The carbon is connected to both of the oxygens. So that's your carboxylic acid. And what's going to happen there? You're going to end up with this acetate ion and some more hydronium. And you can write the Ka expression for that guy. These are all weak acids that we're looking at. We'll talk about weak and strong acids in a little bit. All that over the acetate, acetic acid. Done. And then let's look at a base. So NH3 is one of the few weak bases we're going to look at. And so if this is a base, that means water now is going to act as an acid. So we said water is amphiprotic. It can act as an acid or a base. And so when water acts as an acid, it's going to donate its proton over here. And then you get NH4 plus and some hydroxide. So OH minus is hydroxide. And now since you have a weak base in water, uh, we, we write a KB expression. That B just means base. And so you have NH4 plus and OH minus all over NH3. And so all of these Ka values you can find in a table. Um, we'll look at those later. And the, the bigger the Ka, the stronger the acid's going to be. And so we'll look at that again too.